We are with the incomparable Chip Zion, who's playing Rabbi, and his performance is Tony winning. I saw that folks spin. Oh, you, oh, you did. I oh, did. Yeah. What would you like audiences to know about this show? I, you know what? I, I think of it as being like a, a really big show. Big ideas, his, history, historical ideas. And, um, <clears throat> and it, it covers a huge range of emotion. And we've got these terrific young guys that you talked to a little while ago, the harmonists. So it's fun to hang out with them. I get to hang out with them. And I, uh, Dan, Danny Cornfield and I uh, share the role of the rabbi. He's the young rabbi. In the script, it calls me the old rabbi. But I don't like to use that. I, I like rabbi emeritus is the, <laughs> is the term that I like to use. And, I, and, and my character, as, 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 I, I'm uh, allegedly 87 in the show. My character um, has ha, had a, a, a feeling of guilt that he carried with him for about 50 years about what he did or didn't do when he had an opportunity to, as he puts it, change the, the course of history. So those guys are- I know, I can hear them. Like... Those guys are amazing. <laughs> So, they are so much fun, and yeah. to do all five of them at once is like, oh my God, it's daunting. Yeah, we shared downtown when we did the show off Broadway. We shared a dressing room. Oh, all of us. Oh, we, wow. And during COVID, by the way, we were all in the same dressing room. We had the time of our lives. Did this yeah. show, when you first learned about it, break your heart? It breaks my heart. This show. Yeah, I, I, when I read the script, I, I just was actually first of all, I couldn't believe somebody was showing me this script and offering me this unbelievable role. But, uh, you know, just everything about it, uh, I just couldn't believe that this was happening for me at my age. I've had a, I've been lucky to have this wonderful career that spans a Iconic lot of time. Roles that you know, know these you wonderful from. roles and work with great composers, Steve Sondheim and Bill Finn, and a long time. And when I first heard that it was uh, Barry Manilow, I thought, well, it's so good, it'll be fun. And then I got the music and the book, and it was completely different from what I expected. It's this unbelievably brilliant original score that's period-specific to the 1920s and 30s with amazing harmony that the guys sing. And songs for me, these sort of bravura, eventually, uh, towards the end of the show. Oh, you have that song that knocks <laughs> Yeah, it's knocks sort of towards the end of the show, I have this um, incredibly emotional, it, you know, and it feels really important, the, the song. And it, Barry just wrote material that's unbelievable. So I, I, I was just floored. And then I got on the phone with uh, Warren Carlyle, and we talked about it. And, and, um, Had you worked with Warren before? I, I knew Warren, but I'd never worked with him. Um, I, it's been a great thrill to work with him. To he's, me, he's like Og from Vinian's Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he, the thing is, my wife uh, set the ballets and On Your Toes at Encores, and Warren was the director and did all the other dances. So I, I met him actually through my, my wife. Was your wife complaining because she had to be on her toes all the time? No, no, she wasn't in the show. She just, she was the repetitive, she, she staged all the balancing ballets. Oh, nice. Yeah, she was in the New York City Ballet. And at the, by this point, she was, uh, she, she staged balancing, like Slaughter on 10th Avenue. And that, so I met Barry, I mean, I met uh, Warren at that, at that time. What would you like audiences to know about Harmony? Well, I... I think that uh, the lesson I take away is we have to be careful about uh, our current politics. I think it's really relevant, I, 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 um, how easily democracies can fail and how we need to maintain our, our democracy and uh, kind of avoid um, uh, you know, fascism and, 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 and maintain our my, my feeling is I want people to think about our democracy and work for it. That's what I. That's what I want. Them to do. Thank you. Here with one of my favorite human beings on the face of the planet, Warren Carlyle, who is the director and choreographer of Harmony. How did you get involved in Harmony? Oh God, I begged Bruce and Barry for the job. Come on, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Bruce Sussman, Barry Manilow, sign me up. 
Now you have created so many different genres of choreography in this. Where did it come from in your head? Oh blimey, you know, harmony is a big is a big rangy show. There's lots of different styles. Barry has written a million different styles of music in harmony, which then means I have to create a million different styles of movements. And the comedian harmonists are singers, not dancers, so that presents its own opportunities too. Well, you turn them into dancers for the Yeah, I well. tried. The number where they turn into puppets, how did, that's so cabaret, but it's not. Where did you come from for that yeah, idea? Yeah, it's interesting. So there's a, there's a sequence in Act 2, which is called Come to the Fatherland, which is a very satirical number, and I wanted to show the fellows being controlled by the Nazi party. And what better way than to control people than, than puppet strings? But you did it in a way that they take control, even though they're the puppets. They try to. I mean, they, they fight against it, yeah. What would you like audiences to take away from the show? I'd love audiences to really understand this is a true story. A true, true story. I'd also, you know, in a, in a, in a stronger way, I'd like audiences to realize this can never happen again.